Welcome my friends! I am so excited because in this video we get to talk about the mean, the median, and the mode, which are three of the most common measures of the center of a data set. So let's go ahead and get started. When you hear the word average, most likely you think of the mean, adding up all the values in your data set and dividing by how many values you have. But technically the word average has a little bit more of a broad meaning. The word average just means a number that describes the center of a data set. There are many different things that you could calculate that would all be classified as an average. The three most common ones are the mean, the median, and the mode. Don't believe me? Let me show you. Here is the Wikipedia page for average. It says, in ordinary uh, language, an average is a single number or value that best represents a set of data, kind of like the center of a data set. And if you scroll down, you will see many, many different values that could be represented as an average, including the arithmetic mean, the median, the geometric median, the Tukey median, etc. So really, when we say the word average, we really could mean any of these different things. But right now, at this point, we're just going to be thinking of the word average as meaning either the mean, the median, or the mode. So let's talk about each of those one at a time. Let's say that we have a data set represented by the letter X, which contains the values 5, 5, 6, 7, and 12, and that these numbers represent the years of experience for a loan officer at a bank. Let's go ahead and find the mean. Now to find the mean, we would want to add up all the numbers in the data set and divide by how many numbers that we have, but we would like a more mathematical representation of this definition. In formula form, we say that if we want to find the mean for sample data, which would be a statistic, because statistics are based on samples, then we're going to use the symbol x bar to represent the mean. To find the mean, we're going to add up all the values in your data set, which we represent by the sum of x, and divide by our sample size, which we represent by a lowercase letter n. This symbol in front of the x is the Greek uppercase letter sigma, which tells us to add up whatever is in front of it. In this case, we have an x in front, which is representing our data. So this is read as the sum of x. In this particular example, the sum of x can be found by adding up all of these values together. 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 12, which is equal to 35. The value for lowercase letter n, our sample size, is going to be 5, because there are 5 numbers in our sample. To find the mean, represented by x bar, we take the sum of x, which is 35, and divide by the sample size of n, which is 5, and we get 7. The mean number of years of experience for a loan officer at this bank is 7 years. Note that if we had the population mean rather than the sample mean, then we actually use a different symbol. Instead of using x bar, we would use the Greek letter mu, and we would still have the sum of x in the numerator, but we would have an uppercase n in our denominator to represent the population size. The mean is the most common way to represent the center or average of a data set, so much so that sometimes the words mean and average are used interchangeably. But if we want to be more specific, we really should use the word mean because there could be other things that could be used to represent the average of a data set, such as the median. The median is just the value that is in the middle of an ordered data set. So let's take the same data set that we worked with with the mean, 5, 5, 6, 7, and 12. The data set is already in order, so we are ready to find the median. The median in this case is 6, because 6 is the number directly in the middle of this ordered data set. In this case, we had an odd number of values in our data set, meaning that there is only going to be one single value in the middle, in this case, 6. But if we had an even number of values, then there actually would be two values in the middle. In that case, the median would be the mean of the two middle values. We'll look at an example like this in just a minute. Finally, we have the mode, which is another common way to represent the average of a data set. The mode is the value that occurs the most frequently within the data set. For example, if we have the data set 5, 5, 6, 7, and 12, 5 is the value that occurs the most frequently, twice, and therefore 5 would be the mode. Note that if there are no repeated values in your data set, we would say that there is no mode. If more than one value occurs the most, then there could be multiple modes. Now, instead of thinking of the mode as the single value that occurs the most frequently, you might think about the mode as approximately where do most of the values fall in your distribution. And the easiest way to visualize that is to look at a histogram. So here I have the slide of the histogram from my graphical displays of data video. 
So instead of saying that the mode is one single value, we might say that the mode is kind of within the range of maybe 8 to 12, because in this case, that is where most of the values fall in our distribution. Let's consider how the mean and median might change if we include an outlier into our data set, which is going to be 33. So we have the same data set as before, which contains the number of years of experience for loan officers at the bank. And instead of just having 5, 5, 6, 7, and 12, now we have one additional outlier, which is the number 37. Now we're not going to worry about the mode because, hint, the mode is actually not going to change. But the mean and median will change by the inclusion of this single number. So let's go ahead and find the mean. So we're still going to use the same formula as before. We're going to represent the mean by x bar because it's going to be based on this sample of values. And to find it, we can take the sum of x or sigma of x and divide by the sample size, which is represented by lowercase letter n. In this case, the sum of x is going to be 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 12 plus 37. And if you add all those numbers together, you're going to get 72. Now our sample size is going to be 6 because we have 6 numbers in our data set now. Therefore, our sample mean is going to be 72 divided by 6, which is equal to 12. Note that the inclusion of the outlier of 37 dramatically changed the mean. Without that outlier, we had a mean of 5, and with the inclusion of the outlier, we have a mean of 12. For this reason, we say that the mean is sensitive to outliers. If you have a data set with outliers, then that can sometimes dramatically change the value of the mean. How might the median be affected by the outlier? Let's find out. The median is the value in the middle of an ordered data set. Our data set in this case is 5, 5, 6, 7, 12, and 37, and the data set is already in order. But remember the caveat that I had from before. If we have an even number of values in our data set, the median is going to be the mean of the two middle values. In this case, there is not one single value in the middle, there's actually two values, both 6 and 7. Therefore, the median is going to be 6 plus 7 divided by 2, which is 6.5. Note that the inclusion of the outlier of 37 barely changed the median. Without the outlier, we had the median as 6, and now with the outlier, we have a median of 6.5. For this reason, we might say that the median is resistant to outliers. So whereas the mean is sensitive to outliers, meaning that outliers can dramatically change the value of the mean, the median is robust or resistant to outliers, meaning that outliers generally do not have much of an effect on the median. For this reason, sometimes we might say that the median is preferred over the mean when you have a data set with outliers. The mean and median can be found on the TI-84 calculator using a function that's called 1varstats. Here are some data that represents the number of pages in a random sample of 14 books from a library. So let's grab our handy dandy TI-84 calculator and then let's run the 1var stats. First we need to type these numbers into our stat list. So we can do this by pressing stat and then enter. We can clear out the first list by scrolling up over the first list, pressing clear, and then the down arrow. Then we can go ahead and type these numbers all into the first list. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Once you have all the numbers into your list, you can press the stat key one more time, scroll once to the right, and then choose the very first option, which is 1 var stats. Make sure your list says list 1. If it doesn't say list 1, press second and then number 1. If you have a TI-83, you won't get this menu, and you can just press enter one more time. Let's scroll down and leave the frequency list blank and go to calculate. We will see that the mean is 303. That would be the number if we added up all these 14 values together and divided by 14. We get a couple other things that we don't really need, like the sum of x, that's the numerator in the mean calculation, the sum of x squared, which would be if you squared each of these numbers and added them together, a couple other things we haven't talked about quite yet, the sample size, which is 14, and then if we scroll down, we will see that we get the median of 291.5. So we had a mean of 303 and a median of 291.5. But what about the mode? Well, the calculator doesn't give us the mode, so we can either kind of look at our data and see if there are any repeats, or we can sort the data on our calculator, and then that'll make it a little bit easier to see if there are any repeats. To sort the data on our calculator, we can go back to the stat menu, and then we can scroll down to the sort A option, 
press enter, and then press second, number one, enter, and the calculator will say done. If we go back into the stat list and press enter, you'll see that the numbers have now been sorted. And then we can kind of glance through here and see if there are any repeats. I believe there are not any repeats, so that basically means there is not a mode. But there, if there was a mode, then we could see the repeats very easily and therefore identify which value is the mode. But in this case, we actually had no mode. All right, I have a short little video here for you to watch. So there is kind of a girl and she's on the side of the street and she's asking these people, what do you think the national average salary is? Now, the problem with her question is she does not identify which type of average she is referring to. But nevertheless, all these people kind of give their answers. So uh, she's going to reveal the answer within the video. And then I want you to, you know, based on the responses and based on the answer, try to think about which average is she actually using. And I'll give you a hint. It's either going to be the mean or the median. What is the national average salary? National? 33, 33,000. 33? I would guess like mid-50s, so like a 52 maybe. I would guess like 50, 56. I would guess probably 38. 62,000. My guess is 65. Okay. I guess it's like, I think it's a lot lower. I think it's like 56. I would say 55. 53,924. <laughs> 53,924. Okay. Okay. 53, now to my disappointment, not a single person in this video asked which type of average this person was referring to. Uh, she could be referring to the mean, in which case the number would be kind of skewed towards the right because of some of those really high income people, right? So we have some people who are making, you know, millions or tens of millions of dollars, and those are kind of like outliers, and they would be bringing the mean up. Or if she's talking about the median, then that really wouldn't be affected by the outliers. Uh, so I'd expect maybe the median to be a little bit lower. So kind of knowing whether or not we have the mean or median would make a difference. So the number she has shared was, you know, like 53,924 or something like that. So think to yourself for a second, is this going to be the mean or is this going to be the median? You would answer mean if you thought that that number had been kind of brought up by outliers, or you could answer the median if you thought that that number had, you know, not been, not been affected by outliers. So uh, take that into consideration when considering your answer. So what is the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is, the mean. So actually, oops, uh, actually, the answer was the mean. So the mean uh, income in 2020 was about 53,996. She said something pretty similar to that, uh, whereas the median is actually only $41,535. Uh, so the mean has been kind of pulled up here, you can see by the outliers based on some of those people who have, you know, who are making a lot more than the rest of the people. The median would actually only be, you know, in the low 40,000s. Now, of course, you as the educated statistician after, you know, watching this video and going through a stats class would be sure to, you know, if you were ever asked about an average salary or something, you would be sure to, you know, ask whether or not it's the mean or the median, right? Well, I, heard, I sure hope so. Uh, because, you know, actually, in reality, many times when things like income or house prices or anything to do with money are quoted, more often than not, it actually probably would be the median. And sometimes they would still even use the word average to refer to a median in that case, right? So you should always be thinking to yourself, you know, are they actually referring to the median or the mean and how that might actually change the number that has been reported. Now we have one more thing to talk about, which is how the mean and median relate to each other in a skewed distribution. So previously we have talked about skewed left and skewed right distributions. If we have a skewed left distribution, I've kind of like approximated the histogram here with a curve. Uh, this would be the case where we have, you know, most of the values towards kind of the high end of the distribution, like the higher ends of this curve would be more frequent results. And then uh, kind of towards the lower end of the distribution, we don't have quite as many values. So this is almost kind of like having a few outliers on the low end, having a skewed left distribution. And we already know that outliers are going to drag the value of the mean in the direction of the outliers, but not really affect the median. So if you have a skewed left distribution, you kind of have, you know, a few values that are a lot lower than the rest. And that's going to create a situation where your mean is smaller than your median. So if you have a data set and maybe you haven't even graphed the data set, you just know the mean and the median and you find that your mean is smaller than your median, well, that's going to mean that you most likely have a skewed left distribution. On the other hand, if you have a normal distribution, well, then you're going to have the mean and median very, very close to each other, right? So if you calculate the mean and the median and they're very close to each other, most likely you have a normal distribution. 
You might have some other kind of symmetric distribution, like maybe uniform or something else, but most likely if your mean and median are equal or very close to each other, you probably have a normal distribution. On the other hand, if you have a skewed right distribution, that's kind of like having outliers on the right-hand side. You have a few values that are you know, quite a bit higher than the rest. This is kind of like the incomes or maybe like house prices, right? There's a couple of them that are a lot you know, higher than the rest. And if that's the case, then your median is actually going to be smaller than your mean, right? Because the mean is going to be pulled in the direction of those outliers, right? So kind of uh, the thing to, to remember here is that, well, first of all, we already knew that the mean was going to be very influenced by outliers. Well, the mean is also going to be influenced by skewness. So if you have either a skewed left or skewed right distribution, that's going to pull the mean in the direction of the skewness. So in skewed left, your mean is going to be lower than the median. And in skewed right, your mean is going to be higher than the median. All right, my friends, that finishes everything I wanted to talk about in this video related to the mean, median, and mode. I will see you again in the next video.